In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the animation rigging package to add design features to our characters that make them more dynamic by adjusting the rig to look around at points of interest in our scene procedurally. I have a scene here with two characters. Both are rigged and have idle animations. I'd love to be able to make them feel more alive and interesting by having them look around the environment while they're idling. We could achieve this by creating and switching between additional animation clips, but there's an easier way to do it. Instead, we can use the animation rigging tools to control parts of our characters' bodies and additively influence the position of their heads while continuing to play their idle animations. To get started, we'll first need to install the animation rigging package from the package manager into a project. Our Viking is already looking around a bit, but our archer is staring ahead in a single direction. So let's start by setting up our archer to look around a little bit more while he's standing there. We'll first need to set up the rigging tools on our character. Let's add a rig builder component to our character's route. To make our rigs easier to work with, we can also add a bone renderer script and add our bone transforms to visualize the rig. Let's also create a head rig and assign it to our rig builder. For more information about setting up a character using animation rigging, we've actually already made one video on the basics, which we'll link in the description below, along with the documentation. First, we need to be able to control the rotation of our head. We can do this using a multi-aim constraint component. The multi-aim constraint component allows us to rotate the game object towards a specific point in our scene. In our rig, let's create a new game object called head aim and add a multi-aim constraint component. Let's add a new game object inside our aim transform called aim target and move this slightly out in front of our character. Let's also add an effector so we can visualize the target's position. In our multi-aim constraint component, let's add the head transform from our character's rig as the constrained object here. Let's set the aim axis as our forward direction by selecting Z from the dropdown. Next, let's tell the head target to look at our aim target by assigning the aim target as our source object. Now if we enter play mode and move our aim target object around, our idle animation will continue to play on our character while their head moves to look towards our aim target. We now have a way to easily control where our character is looking while they are standing idle in our scene. You could simply animate the same target to create a basic head look, but I've gone ahead and created a simple idle animation controller script that will randomly move the target transform's position over time. Now our head will randomly move every few seconds, adding a lot more life into our character. This is looking pretty good, but our character's eyes are pretty static. We could add a lot more life to our character if we move their eyes around a little independent to their head. Let's create a new game object in our rig called eye aim. Then let's add two new game objects in here for each eye. Next, let's add a multi-aim constraint component to our left eye and set the left eye on our character's rig as the constrained object. Let's set the aim axis to Z and set the aim target on our head as the source object. Then let's do the same with the right eye, but let's make sure to set the aim axis to minus Z. If we then play our scene, not much has changed. This is because the IK weights for both our eyes and head are the same, so they're all moving the same amount of distance to track our target. However, if we select our head game object and change the weight in the inspector, notice how the head returns to the idle position but the eyes remain locked onto our aim target as it moves around. If we set the head weight to around 0.755, it will still move towards the direction of our aim target, but will move more gradually than our character's eyes. It's a subtle effect, but it's a small addition that easily adds a bit more life to a character. Another great way we can use this to add more life to our characters is by creating points of interest. Currently, our archer character is not really paying much attention to our viking here, but it would be much better if they took an interest in anyone that was nearby. I'd like our aim position on our archer here to target the head of our viking character whenever they are within a certain distance of one another. We can do this using a simple overlap sphere calculation from our archer and designating our viking's head as the point of interest. I've created a script on my archer called look at nearby. 
In here, we're performing a simple overlap sphere calculation with a specific radius from the point of our character's head. This creates a sphere of vision on our character that looks for any nearby colliders. Our script then looks to see if there are any colliders inside of this vision sphere, and if there are, checks to see if any of them have a point of interest component attached. The point of interest component is a mostly functionless component. It just holds a possible target transform to aim at. When a point of interest is assigned to our Viking character, the look at nearby script will move the aim target to the point of interest target. When the target is no longer visible, the look at script will tell the target position to return to the origin point. On our archer character, we'll set this up by assigning their head transform so that our vision sphere can be cast from the right height and assign the aim target transform from our archer's rig. Let's also disable the idle aim script for now so that it doesn't conflict with our look at nearby script. I've used the onDraw gizmos function in the script to allow us to visualize our vision sphere in the scene view. Let's set our vision radius to about 1.25, and then let's set our lerp speed to 20. Next, all we need to do is set our Viking as a point of interest for our character. If we set up a collider on our Viking character and add a point of interest component, we can designate the head as the look target. If we play our scene, when our Viking passes our archer, our archer will look at them. When they're no longer nearby and outside of their cone of vision, they'll return back to their initial look position. We can also use this point of interest script to assign nearby objects for a character to look at. As you can see, animation rigging can be a great way to create more dynamic characters in your game that interact with one another and help bring your scene alive. For more information on animation rigging and to download the demo project yourself, follow the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching.